Good afternoon and welcome to Unbox Lunch. Before we get started, please know that this event is being recorded. I'm Jenny Williams, Associate Director of the Archives of American Art at the Smithsonian Institution. We're thrilled that you're joining us for lunch, which I'm enjoying here at our headquarters in Washington, DC. The Archives of American Arts National Collector, Josh, excuse me, Josh T. Franco will soon join us and will feature the newly acquired papers of Marie R Romero Cash. A few housekeeping items before we get started though. At any time during the webinar, you can submit your questions into the Q&A at the bottom of the control panel on your screen. Closed captioning is available and you can access this by clicking the CC button on the right side of the control panel. We're so thrilled that um, the artist, um, Marie, could join us today. So Marie, please do chime in um, with, any, uh, with any comments or, or, or questions that you may have. Now, I'd like to welcome and introduce my colleague, Josh Franco. Hey, Josh. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm feeling very Friday, I bet you are too. Uh, I'm so glad to be here to feature the papers of Marie Romero Cash and see some friends. I see Karen Mary Davalos, Kay Turner in the chat. Hi, y'all. Um, oh, this will be fun. Uh, and hi, Marie. So I'm going to jump in because y'all, as y'all know, if you attend these regularly, they, they go by very quickly. Um, these are Marie's papers behind me, but I'm going to start with a quick screen share. So um, it's always nice when, uh, you know, an artist exists in the archives before their papers actually come in. Um, and that's the case with Marie. So the Chuck and Jan Rosenack research materials are a frequently used collection here. The Rosenacks are um, collectors and authors. Um, and in this case, the important book to keep in mind is the Saint Makers, Contemporary Santeros y Santeras. A Santera is uh, an artist who works in the um, hundreds of years old Hispano tradition of making images of saints um, in the sort of syncretic Southwestern Catholic tradition. Um, sometimes in painting, sometimes in sculpture, uh, and Maria is certainly uh, one of the most respected and accomplished living Santeros today and comes from a, a long family um, who work, have worked in that tradition. So in the Rosenax papers, there's um, some great files uh, about Marie. Um, here's a couple of digitized photographs of Marie at work. Um, so yeah, so that's great. And before we stop screen sharing, I just wanna give you a little more context. Um, one of the uh, accomplishments of Marie Romero Cash that you know, really is a very clear demonstration of national impact, which is something we take into consideration as we consider um, whose papers uh, we preserve here at the archives, um, is her contribution in the 90s to the Cathedral Basilica of St. Francis of Assisi in Santa Fe. Um, you know, people love Santa Fe, probably many of you in the audience have been there and visited this church. Here's the interior, uh, here's the facade. Um, so, Marie's specific contribution, luckily, I was in Santa Fe a couple weeks ago. Uh, Maria, it wasn't, it was for a personal project, not for the archives where I would have set up a meeting. I will next time for sure. Um, here's me for scale and the Stations of the Cross that Marie painted for the cathedral are, um, you can see them here in the two aisles. Um, I believe there's 13 paintings, um, but Marie, correct me if I'm wrong. So um, yeah, that was really special. If you're in Santa Fe, you know, go see them. Um, Marie's books are in the gift shop and artwork are in the gift shop there. Um, so yeah, so it's a very nice connection if you're in town to um, know that you have a little familiarity with Marie's papers after this uh, event. Okay, so I'm gonna stop sharing, stop looking at many, many screens. Marie says there's 15, thank you, 15 paintings. Um, all right, so I'm gonna keep on that theme of the uh, Stations of the Cross at St. Francis and start diving into a box of the, some of the newly donated material um, to the Marie Romero cash papers. So um, Marie is very intentional about how she donates her papers to us. And uh, so, you know, a little bit comes at a time, but it's always very well organized and labeled, which is very nice. Um, so this folder has mater materials pertaining to that commission 
uh, in 96, 97 at St. Francis. So Did let's see what's in internship. here. Is there a question, Jenny? No, I was just saying she has beautiful penmanship. Someone had commented. Uh, yeah, and her handwriting is incorporated into some of her paintings. So I'll, we'll see an example of that um, soon. So this was, I thought, really beautiful, very well organized and stored in cellophane body of documents. I'm opening it up. Um, as with the all unboxed featured collections, this is yet to be processed. It is accessible, the deed is signed, so researchers can come visit it, um, but it's not processed in the sense that our processing archivists haven't um, gotten to do it to do their thing. So, um, you know, the cellophane might be replaced with uh, acid-free folders and interleaving eventually. Um, little details like that will be taken care of to further ensure the preservation of the materials. So correspondence, of course, is bread and butter at the archives. Um, this is one of the most interesting commission letters that I think we have. Uh, Marie says Catholic school nuns are big on penmanship. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that's a good thing. It worked out well for you. Um, this is So this is the letter from uh, the Archbishop of Santa Fe at the time, Michael J. Sheehan. Um, so you know, commission letters are something we have tons of in the archives, but this one has a particularly interesting, you know, character because it is from a religious institution. Uh, and I, you know, I commend Sheehan for making this corrective. I'll read briefly uh, a paragraph. So St. Francis Cathedral was built in 1869 in the Romanesque style favored by Archbishop Lamy. It has often been thought that the artwork for the, for the cathedral was to be of a specific type and style. The art of the Santero was considered by many not suited to the style of the cathedral and has therefore been excluded. It is my intention to rectify this. And he informs Marie with this letter that she's one of three artists being considered. Um, she ultimately won the commission, as we can see. Um, I just think this is fascinating because it's, you know, a real admission. Um, I think that's a real cultural shift, right, to not think that uh, Imagery for the Catholic Church must be imported from Europe and based on European visual culture and standards, but can come from a homegrown tradition, a syncretic tradition um, like Santeria Small. So um, that's just to give you a little bit of a sense of um, how important this commission is in the history of art and in the history of American visual culture. This also all kind of does that thing that I like that stretches our idea of American. Um, you know, it's a uh, very presumptuous of us to have American in our title as an institution. So I take that seriously and think about it a lot. Um, in this case, you know, we're really making a statement with this collection that um, our understanding of American can come from, you know, it exceeds uh, English colonization, it exceeds um, certain historical time periods that other institutions may not consider. Um, and their scope of what defines American. So, you know, an ever evolving uh, critical question to be asking yourself uh, over and over again. Um, so I'm gonna carefully, again, an another very nice label. The post-it will be replaced. I know our archivists um, are not fans of post-its because of the adhesive, but they'll maintain the information for sure. So the same note will be transcribed and put in on uh, safer paper. So this is original rendering for the 13th station at St. Francis. And what was that? We have a question. Um, Karen is asking, what was the year of the commission? Uh, 96, 97. And that letter was from 95, I believe. But conclude, the project was completed in 97. So here's an original preparatory sketch, very faint in the camera. Very nice. And this is uh, the image of Christ being brought down from the cross um, by his, by Mary. And then uh, we'll just stay with this project one second more, one document more, again, well labeled. And these are photographs. We love process photographs here. Our researchers find them incredibly valuable. Um, so these will be very, very helpful for someone studying uh, this work of art. And here's another great photograph of Marie at work on those in her studio. Let's see one more. So this is, you can get a real sense of the scale because Marie is, you know, right up against it working. 
So great. Again, and uh, you know, just well complemented by the material in the Rosenax papers. It's just a very nice feeling when uh, collections speak to other collections so directly. Um, it's real proof of the interconnectedness of American art. Okay. I'm gonna set that aside carefully. Um, Marie also has uh, illustrated and written um, some books, often children's books. And I'm gonna pull out this. Um, and of course she illustrates them herself. So one of those books is The Saint Maker's Daughter. And Marie, I don't know, is that a little bit autobiographical or not? I was curious. Um, since you are a St. Maker's daughter. And I'll say Marie's parents have been honored at the White House for their, um, specifically for their tinsmithing, which we'll talk about um, later. Well, and, we give Marie a minute to, to respond, just a reminder that if anyone has any questions, do put them in to um, the chat box. Marie says, actually, my sister was the only St. Mira. Okay, yeah, so that's a good distinction. Thanks, Marie. Uh, Santera, tinsmithing is one kind of medium and craft. Santerisma, san, saint making is another. Um, and good note to keep those distinct. So these are the original illustrations for Saint Maker's Daughter. So, you know, as opposed to looking at the published version, you can really closely study the brush strokes, the pen strokes. Um, yeah. One more, then we'll go to some big stuff. And um, one of the things I was telling Jenny yesterday too, is that when I was in Santa Fe, I was looking, there was another artist featured in um, the gift shop at the Basilica. And you can really, you, Kind of when you look closely, tell kind of hallmarks of different artists and start being able to distinguish them. This other artist would do a particular mark under the eye that Marie doesn't do, for instance. Um, so those are the kinds of things that a researcher can study closely with these documents in our reading room. This is another thing that would be uh, rehoused, you know, kept in the same order, but rehoused. Although I do appreciate this plastic wrapping that just keeps everything intact for now. All right. So I will bring out some oversized materials. We love oversized material. Um, so one of the things I appreciate, Marie, about your practice too, is that uh, you know there's a real fluidity between the sacred and the secular. Um, I love that, and um, you know the same care you give to images like this. You know Jesus bearing the cross. Uh, you also give to other figures that are in the other folder that I'll pull out. But let me show you one more from here. Here's Adam and Eve a sketch. Um, but OK, so Marie does not shy away from depicting, um, you know, non Religious figures. Get We're getting lots of con direct comment, not questions, but comments about the, the, the beautiful, about the work and how beautiful it is. Oh, good. I'm, I totally agree. And there's, I do too. We haven't even, we're really only like the big, the big stars are yet to come. Too. I know. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, Jenny, you know. So, okay. Here comes my point again that I'm trying to make. Um, you know, I think there's a very interesting study to be made between uh, depicting saints in the Hispano tradition and um, Chicano art, the realm of Chicano art. And Marie, I don't know if that term means anything to you personally, um, but you know, this I'm asking because of this sketch of a chola and a cholo figure. Um, so the cholo very identified by his mustache style, headband, suspenders, flared pants. 
his lady or his ruka, as you might say in uh, in Pachuquismo, um, holding on to him. And you know, I, Maria, I don't know if, if this was preparatory for a painting or for a sculpture. I'd love to know that, um, and if it was ever produced. But yeah, I love this. So the same artist, you know, taking the same amount of care to depict these everyday secular figures, um, in addition to saints and images, you know, figures like Christ. And then along the lines of other popular figures. I she says that. that it was carved for a nativity, which featured also a low rider. Oh, nice. Yeah. Oh, and, you know, Charlie Cadillo <laughs> is another um, saint maker who, who does low riders really well. Um, yeah, I love that intersection of saints and Chicano culture. And okay, so this is, you can see the, the notation at the bottom. I can get it there. If Frida could have danced. So the, in addition to the name Frida, this figure also has a unibrow I'm trying to do this backwards. You can see there. So I think it's pretty safe to assume this is Frida Kahlo. Um, and if you, you know, have any familiarity with Frida Kahlo's biography, you know, she was famously um, injured and immobile for a lot of significant portions of her life. So imagining her dancing is such a lovely, you know, recuperative gesture, imaginative gesture. Um, and Murray is telling us, inspired by Maria Benita, is the flamenco dancer. Um, Karen Mary, write that essay. We got a joke. Yes, definitely. <laughs> Uh, so I love that. I think it's great. And there's another um, cutout shape of, of this figure in the box I put away a second ago. So you could see it develop in stages. And then this folder, before I put it away, contains one of our favorite things, I think. It's definitive. If it's what I think, if it's the, the image from the invitation, it's definitively yeah. mine. Yeah. Favorite. So this is a coloration for the altar screen. I think that's the right term, or you connect me if I'm wrong. Um, <laughs> Marie, sure, we'll take it. Um, this is just beautiful, and it's uh, it was a study for the screen at El Rito Church um, in New Mexico. The first rendering, it's labeled first rendering here. Um, it features, you know, the Virgen de Guadalupe, uh, San Antonio, Santa Barbara, Nuestro Señor de Escupulas, San Martín de Tours. Yeah, it's a great study. Um, I don't know, I just kind of want to stare at it a lot. I, know. I want you to stare at it a lot because it's know. beautiful. Okay, but I'm going to set it aside. And I'm going to put on gloves. So it's going to take me a minute to put gloves on. If anyone has any questions, this is a good time to um, ask. Marie says that that is an altar screen at El Rito, 20, that's 21 feet high and painted in acrylic. Yeah, that's so high. So I have to visit that next time I'm in New Mexico for sure. So I'm putting on gloves. So, you know, just a little archives pro tip. Uh, paper with paper handling it is um, hand, clean hands are preferred because uh, gloves can cause micro tears by catching microfabrics in the paper. Also, your finger pads are more sensitive to um, any kind of inclusions in paper that might lead to tears. So if you can feel them, if you're more sensitive to them, you're better able to avoid sort of activating them. But the opposite is true with metal. Uh, because metal is, um, oh, thanks for adding that info, Marie. Uh, because metal, you know, holds on to humans' oils, skin oil, any kind of oil pretty permanently, it's hard to remove and can be corrosive over time. So because I'm about to handle a metal object, I am um, putting on some gloves. So you read Karen's mind. She just oh, yeah. asked this question. <laughs> I saw that. Yes, that's why. <laughs> and normally, you know, it's fine to use nitrate gloves. So you're just trying to avoid the oils. But um, we just we need we need to get some cotton gloves in stock. This made me realize yesterday. Uh, we're mostly paper, so we usually just don't even have gloves. But special case. Okay. 
And here's this amazing thing. I'm just gonna talk about the outside first a little bit. It is hammered tin. Uh, it's a collaborative effort. Marie left a very helpful note inside. I'll read to you in a moment, explaining who worked on this. Um, this is how our registrar has housed it. So this, you know, in, a, in essence, has been um, physically processed. This is probably how it will remain. Uh, it's got in this cardboard bottom uh, just that it sits on its shelf in, and it's a little archival tag with barcode, so it will never be lost, of course. So many knots. Uh, this is a Marie's sort of interpretation, visual interpretation of the Book of Tobit, uh, which is, you know, depending which denomination, which group you ask, um, is an apocryphal book of the Bible, is a fictional account, is a part of the Bible. Um, but, so, you know, it's an interesting piece of work to, uh, to think about those debates through. Here's the title, hammered into the beautiful lid. Look at that detail. Mm, gorgeous. And then another very helpful note from Marie. Thank you so much. Um, boo, boo, boo. So here's sort of the family explanation. My parents were traditional tinsmiths, as were my brothers but they were long gone. So I contacted my nephew, Marshall, Marshall Romero, and he created the tin box to house the book. I asked Jerry Montoya, a tinsmith from Grants, New Mexico to create the repousse panel for the cover. As he was the only craftsman I knew who could do this process on tin. And my nephew attached the cover to fit over the box. And then Marie concludes, I loved creating this retablo-like book and was very pleased with the outcome and the parts of the story I had chosen. Uh, all right, so get ready, because this is a beautiful, beautiful thing. So I consider this an unpublished manuscript, um, kind of like the illustration, although that was published, the it's a little bit in this category, the illustrations for Saint Maker's Daughter. Um, but as you know, it is a unique object, uh, but that's sort of the archival category to consider it in. There's more of Marie's beautiful handwriting and illustrations. I'm assuming you're all gasping. Yes. You know, on your we do have a question about what is this made of? Like, what is the material? Oh, good question. Um, it appears to be kind of wood. Let me see if it's in this note. Or Marie, if you want to. Karen Mary's crying. Yes, exactly. Same. It is beautiful, yeah. Um, she refers to other biblically themed wood carvings she's made. I mean, I think it's pretty sure it's wood, but I never like to say that. A birch panels, one eighth inch, gesso, then watercolor. Amazing. Um, we'll print this chat and put it in with the collection because it's very helpful. Uh, you can see the real handmadenness in the strokes. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, it looks like, Marie, I don't know if you bound it and then painted it and that's why the strings are blue or if you dyed the strings, I think that's something I'd be curious about. The binding is beautiful. And I'm just gonna keep flipping through this. Mm. So I think, you know, I keep imagining serving this in the reading room, mm -hmm. how people will um, engage with it. <laughs> That's great. Uh, it was painted, couldn't figure out how to bind it. French binding with waxed string. And Kay Turner says, beautiful, beautiful. Work. Yeah. So Kay, I'll out you a little bit as a, a wonderful practitioner and expert on um, what category do I say? Domestic uh, spiritual practices, altar makers. Um, 
Marie, <laughs> uh, you know, Marie, I think we, it should definitely be digitized at some point, which is kind of our form of publishing, I guess, and then it would live on the website and people could flip through it there. That's a very good idea. Um, yeah, I think we could do a lot of interesting things with this, and I'm really grateful that you trusted us with it. It's, it's really incredible. Um, just to be Josh, we just yeah. a quick question. Could you remind us again the year? I, I actually don't recall either, but we have oh. a question if we, you could remind us of the year of that. I don't think I so this note was written September 2018. I don't know if that's the year the book was produced. Marie, if you remember, I want to drop that in the chat. I'm looking for a date. Um, she's Maria is saying that she loved the story. Um, it explains that Tobit was the fellow whose blindness was cured by the archangel Raphael. And she says yeah. she's not the, the date should be somewhere. Yeah, well, the, so I'm, you know, if we want to, does 2018 sound right? That's what's on the, um, the explanation here. And you just donated this a few months ago. So I don't think this was written specifically for us. So I'm gonna assume 2018. Yeah. Oh, here's a whole paragraph about um, uh, binding. I then had to figure out how to bind these wood pages. I spent frustrating hours experimenting and researching, thus the extra holes drilled on the edge. Oh yeah. Uh, after meeting with a book restorer in a nearby community, I soon realized this was something that could not be professionally bound. She actually looked at me like I was nuts. I've gotten that look, Marie. I know that look. Uh, bottom line, paper was flexible, wood is not. So I bound it with leather cord the best I could. Amazing. So it's leather actually, Not I've been saying string. It is leather string, but I was assuming cotton or something. Great. She's saying, yeah, inside book cover, there might be a date as well. Oh yeah. Um... This is what I love about Unbox Lunch. People ask these, we literally just, are getting this and looking through it. So we're, you're discovering it with us. Yeah. Oh, there is a date. Marie Romero Cash signature 918. So yeah, September 2018 is the, um, the year it was made. And Marie, you can see where you wrote actually the text in black. And clearly that wasn't visible over the blue. So you rewrote in white. I don't know if that'll come through on the camera, but that's really interesting. So can you see the black handwriting under the white a little bit? A little bit if under the two Spain. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So this is a real, like, really beautiful insight into an artist process in every step. Um, so I don't know. Are there any last questions to wrap up? These always go by so quickly. I know they do. We're, we have about two minutes left, so we could take one more question if anyone, anyone has anything to add. We have a question about, you know, just how you acquired this like what was your relationship um with marie did you reach out to her yeah this is one of those that um you know i've said on here before the collectors often have to learn on our feet because we don't individually you know from our own research backgrounds automatically know everything that should be preserved here um, but that was not the case here my own research before i came to the archives uh, as Kay knows, who's a frequent <laughs> uh, citation in my dissertation, um, as is Marie, actually. Uh, my research background before I came here did involve um, domestic altars and sacred art by Chicanos and Mexican Americans. So I knew Marie's name well. Um, I was initially hired at the archives as Latino collection specialist. So I had, you know, double the reasons to um, approach Marie about her papers. It was uh, a Again, just finding her in the Rosenax collection already uh, was a good sign. And then, yeah, I just, I think I just emailed you, Marie, and came to Santa Fe. Uh, we visited at your home, had a great fun time. You know, I laid out what kinds of things we collect. And you've been, uh, this is the second installment of Marie's papers. Uh, the first one was sent a little bit after that first conversation, probably in 2016 or 17. Uh, and this, what we've featured here today is the second edition that just came in the last couple of months. Um, so that's a great question. And yeah, that's how this collection came in. Different story with every collection, right? Um, okay, well, uh, thank you so much, uh, Josh, and thank you, Marie, for, for joining us. Um, 
uh, hope that you've enjoyed this program as much as I had. She is a personal um, favorite of mine and someone that I knew about coming to the before coming to the archives. So I'm glad that we um, could feature you, um, Marie, and I hope to have the opportunity to meet you in person. Um, thank you, everyone, for joining and look forward to seeing you in July. Bye, Marie. Bye, y'all.